After all, I had a lot of good years. And good things have happened. Experiences that other people haven't had. And, uh, I've been very blessed. Doctors found cancer in Richard Bradford's bladder six years ago. It was a very mild form at that time. And they had nice, easy answers for a few years. But then uh, it uh, just got worse, we'll say. And uh, the time came when the doctors down at uh, the um, Huntsman uh, I said to him, oh, you're, uh, we, we can't really help you. We can help you, but we can't cure you. We, we can give you some more time and make you more comfortable. But uh, you're, you're essentially on the way out. And they can't give me a time. Bradford served in the U.S. Army in Korea, taught high school, raised six children, and loved one woman for 56 years. Come on over here, and then you won't have to be in the limelight afterwards. Come in. Ellen has stood by Richard's side through all of the ups and downs of life, and now she gently holds his hand as his life slowly falls from the tree. The secret is that when you get down to this point, that you can somehow convince your wife that she's the best thing that ever happened to you. Richard sits in his lazy boy chair at his home in Logan, Utah, a place he and Ellen have lived nearly their entire married life. His children know he will soon die, and they try and spend as much time with him as possible. You think, oh, I'll do that when I have time. And you realize you don't know how much time you have. Because we have knowledge that, that we will live after we die, it's much easier to accept that kind of diagnosis. So we know we'll say goodbye for a while, but we have the hope of being together again. That hope makes dying a little easier for Richard Bradford. He truly laughs in the face of death. One minute, he's doing a standard routine about taking out the class cat. I can't put up with this. <laughs> Next, he puts on a pair of bug eyes under his glasses. Did he draw on <laughs> Instead of dying, he's killing it. Sometimes I... Tell kids I have a frog in my throat. Mr. Bradford taught at Logan High School for 35 years. His students thought he looked like Orville Redenbacher and decorated the school with his face on their own appointed Mr. Bradford Day. At noon, I kneel on my knees and thank the Lord for what I was doing, able to do, and pray that I would not damage those kids and I'd be able to help them. But I said far more important than that is the fact that a lot of those kids are coming here from homes where their parents prayed and are praying that I will not damage them that I will be useful to their, in their lives. I didn't also mention that there are kids at home that want to know what Mr. Bradford did today <laughs> when they come home for supper. Richard's granddaughter, Hannah, has carried on his teaching legacy. Teaching is fun, and at least that's the perspective I had of it. He made it fun and he loved his job. He believes in failing. He lets 
he let his, you know, he, he told his students, like, it's okay if you make a mistake, it's okay if you fail, he just wanted to help people get better. And but Hannah and his other grandchildren know their grandpa will never get better. So they treasure every moment they have left with him. For everybody, it is the hardest thing people go through their entire lives. Dan Judd works for hospice as a chaplain and spiritual counselor. Every day, he visits people who are dying. In a casual conversation with a stranger, you usually don't talk about Jesus or talk about love. It's, there's a lot of time before we get to the level that we're comfortable with other people to the point that we can talk about those things that are so close. But if you sing a hymn, all of a sudden you're singing, Jesus, the very thought of thee with sweetness fills my breath. And they go, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, just the thought of Jesus helps them. Richard Bradford calmly waits his time. No fear, only faith. So that you can understand why I'm not worried about dying. smile because I'll be able to smell my main breath. A limb has fallen from the family tree. I keep hearing a voice that says, grieve not for me.